my Detroit native brother from another mother, the Honorable Judge Greg Mathis. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. Man, we got we to gotta hit him with that Detroit. What up, though? That's right. That's right. <laughs> That's you know, Detroit. Coney Island, <laughs> Detroit Tiger Stadium. There you go. Uh, all the uh, White Castle. I mean, it's crazy, right. man. And uh, I think everyone knows, or they should, that we are both from Detroit. We are both from Detroit, and man. So... Native Detroiters, brother. And we wear that with pride. That's right, you know absolutely. What's side D? That's right. right. <laughs> and I think people need to know your success story. We know you're a world-class intellectual now, the well sought out. And folks don't know, Dr. Dyson started with a GD. Sure did, man. I Judge Mathis started with a GED. That's right. Dr. Dyson. That's right. One of the toughest neighborhoods in Detroit. Yes, sir. Indeed, yes, Indeed, America. Yeah. The judge. One of the toughest Come on. neighborhoods in the country. There so it is, man. We're so much alike, and we're so proud that oh, Detroit uh, has produced us. Uh, you know what? Amen. Let's Thank give some you. love to that right there. <laughs> and, and the only difference is you, you preside on the bench. I'm just sitting on the bench. But, uh, <laughs> but I'll start one day. But look, you, your show is remarkable. I was telling you the other day, that I watch your show, and what amazes me is that you managed to slip in some serious, inspirational Norman Vincent Peale, T.D. Jakes, uh, Jesse Jackson on them. I mean, you really managed to both adjudicate competing cases, but also bring a message. Tell us what that came from. Well, you know my career. You and I knew before, um, before I was on television, you right. and I knew each other uh, from uh, the social justice movement. That's right. And so uh, coming to television gave me a bigger platform to do what I've done all my adult life, and that is advanced social justice. You know, I worked for the mayor in That's Detroit right. and That's ran right. campaigns for Reverend Jackson. That's where that comes from. But people don't want to be lectured. They don't want to get medicine right. about justice, right. about what to do. They want to be entertained. Right. So you have to entertain them first. That's right. And then you slip in that little medicine and social justice <laughs> that they need to uh, enhance their lives. Lives. Right, right. No, that's extraordinary, man. And, you know, we've got to, you know, we know that you are not only a remarkable judge, and as you said, slipping in that social medicine, but you also have a compassion for vulnerable people. I mean, some judges you watch on TV, they're harsh, they're condescending, they're dismissive. You're always imagining yourself in that other position. Not that you're not tough, but you always empathize with those people. Where does that empathy come from? It comes from the life I've lived. It comes, it comes from seeing people having to survive in drug and crime infested neighborhoods, uh, living in poverty because of a failed education system, knowing the dynamics of society that cause uh, the people who come before me to have so many challenges, knowing and seeing and having been there mm -hmm. gives me that empathy. But, you know, I'll turn on them in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh. You, you ain't no joke, bro. <laughs> if you so, disrespect me, that's all I have. Well, let, let, let's take a look. We got a clip of one of your most memorable uh, cases, and we want to play that for our people now. He running from the street gangs. How many young people run from the street gangs and try and escape? None. And yeah, I'm crying because I see myself in it. There's one thing to give a young man tough love. But where's the love? All I hear is toughness. Mm. Now, for those of you who don't know at home, Judge Mathis is one of the most electrifying public speakers uh, and orators that you will ever find. And I come up in a great tradition, C.L. Franklin, Frederick Sampson, Charles Adams. So I know what I'm talking about, oh, Jesse God. Jackson. This is one of the greatest speakers out there. <laughs> Amen. And, and that... That clip allows you to sample a little bit of that flavor, but man, that was like, what, 15 years ago? That must have stuck with you, huh? And what was uh, most memorable about, about it and fulfilling, two years later, maybe three, he came back to the show, mm -hmm. had his junior college degree, and was a youth man minister. Right. So he made turnaround from a gangbanger to a youth minister with a degree in five years. Right, right. <clears throat> How gratifying is that? Yeah. I mean, a lot of people, you know, want to give back. They talk about giving back. But how gratifying is it for you to see the change and transform lives uh, in the people that you've presided over and they come back and let you know, 
that, that your, your words, your judgments made a difference. That's the most fulfilling part of the job. Uh, I, you know, I'm pleased that people are entertained. I like the two nickels that uh, allows me to be stress-free. However, the most fulfilling part is when most people come up to me and talk about how I help change their son's lives or right. their lives right, right. or how the message is going to help change mm. lives. I, am, I appreciate the, oh, you're so sure funny. Oh, I love it. But what I find most fulfilling is people telling me that I've made a difference. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> now, you've got a community center. Tell us a bit about what you do and the kind of work that you all are trying to do to change the community. Yeah, yeah the Mathis Community Center, we've been around for 18 years. Much of our work with, is with youth and ex-offenders. Uh, we help mentor youth, and then we have an ex-offender program that, one, uh, has the records cleared through an expungement process. Mm -hmm. We have lawyers come in and help those who are in need of expungements. Then we help place them with jobs. If they can't get jobs, which is the case in many instances, we then uh, help them start businesses. We've helped 22 people start small franchises. Mm. And they, uh, have done right. That. So, do you separate, is it easy for you to separate Granddaddy Mathis from Judge Mathis? Uh, well, they've never been uh, together. <laughs> it's always been granddaddy. Yeah, and that's yeah. it. And that's the way I uh, embrace uh, both my wife, my children, and now my grandchild. But she's the most special of them all now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, if people don't know you, you're a tremendous family man. Every time we see you, your wife is there, your, your handsome son is there, your grandchild. So you're a, you're a tremendous family man. Don't put so much pressure on me. <laughs> <laughs> but, <yes. laughs> but you represent well, man. I'm so proud of you being from Detroit, for you to be a legendary, iconic figure. We celebrate you, and we thank God for the work that you do, my man. Thank you. All right.